base of pyramid, trickle down, uh, social protection, da 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 do, we are actually deflecting from the real issue. And the real issue is inequality. Uh, so uh, it's time to start naming things by their name. 94% of the workers in the informal sector, which is a very large business sector in Egypt, um, have no education. An education that can, we can claim equips them for the business community, the business market. First, we need to dispel a few myths. myths. One of them is that all these people in the informal sector are rogues. They're rascals, they're men who are avoiding taxes. In fact, now the narrative and the research on the informal market is about families. It's not about a few uh, people riding tuk-tuks and not paying taxes. It's families. And if we start talking about the family dimension of informality of entrepreneurs, I think we'll get much better results. So how can we say that these people are not entrepreneurs, are not contributing to GDP growth, are not in the country? Yani, they're 60% of the people, and they are doing business right there every day. This is in Manshit Nasser. Okay, there are images like this all over Egypt. This woman is a single mother. She lives in one room. She has raised two daughters. I know her personally. And over the years, by recovering metal pins, she managed to support herself and educate her two daughters and get them married. Globally, 40% of all metals recovered on the international market start in a room like this. I'm a member of a global... Uh, what we know about informal workers is that they, this is common knowledge, occupational risks, unprotected, inferior conditions, uncertain uh, wages every day. Yet, you know what, just like our previous speaker said, as GDP rises, which is happening in Egypt, these people's situation does not necessarily improve. And there is no link between the improvement our, of our economy as a whole and the improvement of the business sector in the informal sector. That this situation that they live in particularly affects children and women. And here we need to stop talking about the informal sector as people who evade taxes all the time. Mostly, this is how our conversation revolves around them. Let's get them formalized so that they can contribute to taxes. No, I think we need to start saying, let's improve their household conditions so that the children do not grow up like this, so that they eat well, so that they don't need ration cards, so that they can support themselves. Another myth we need to dispel is that they do not contribute to taxes. In fact, they do, massively. The taxes they contribute to are varied, they may not be direct income tax, but heck, they contribute to uh, VAT, to uh, other, uh, other taxes as they go along. Certainly, any lifting of subsidies, any taxation of uh, services, uh, of tolls, of roads, they do contribute to those. They license their trucks, and so on and so forth. When you are a formal business and you apply for land, to set up your enterprise. It's quite a nightmare. Any, any corporate here will tell you. Now, so because these people know that there is no way they are going to get land to enterprise, this is what they do all over the country, in formal markets, and they squat on land everywhere in massive numbers. 60% of the economy, what are you going to do with them? You can't evict all these people. Where are you going to move them to? And so on and so forth. It becomes a social nightmare. And then we start talking about the social aspect of poverty. Well, it's not social, this is business. I am going to go to the Ministry of Investment, one-stop shop, and get a bit of Adarabeya and, 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 and make that first step. Why would I do that? Are there any benefits or is it going to uh, result in repercussions that are going to be negative. It's a very major decision for me to do that, to formalize myself. But then I have to be included in the economy, whether I'm a carpenter, a plumber, a garbage collector, a recycler, uh, what uh, little mama and papa shops selling groceries. I have to make sure that when I formalize, my government has a policy that seeks to make me enterprise in a safe and fair and equitable manner. 
I don't think we are there yet. At the end of the day, if we want to seek for a better business uh, portfolio for our country, we really need to recognize the informal sector as a valuable asset and not, not just as people who are avoiding taxes. Thank you.